Hi, I'm Justine S. Harrison. I was just interviewed by Keith Andrew, which was awesome. Fantastic interview. Really fun time. I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew, and this is episode 576. I'm here with the beautiful and talented Justine S. Harrison. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm glad we got to do it. No, oh, absolutely. Hey, you support a good message and cause, and you're making a new friend out of it. Well, absolutely. With that being said, half hour, 33 minutes of your time. You can say anything you want, talk about whatever you want. Uncensored freedom, speech, self-expressing, hold back, you can say anything you want, but the first thing I'm going to say is the following is brought to you by the Keith Andrew Network official coffee mug. You can get your mug today. I have a couple left in stock. I wanted to give myself one, so this is an example one. Also, you I can also, one. this comes in great use because you can put pens in there. You can use your um, loose change. You know, if you don't like coffee, fine, use your imagination. Also, we have the trouble mug. We're just trying to find a good spot so it doesn't glare. But it's the official mug. Same thing. You put your change in there. You can put um, pencils or whatever the hell you want in there. Use your imagination. So that being said, and I'm actually getting back into practice. My last interview, my disability was shown, but now I'm actually getting my face on. <laughs> oh, but, there you go. but with that being said, normal conversation, same thing that you want. I have nothing to hide. But the first thing I want to ask you is life growing up. And I saw that you were from Long Island. My I family is actually from Long Island. So what can you tell us about life growing up? I grew up in Huntington, which is on the north shore of Long Island. I've worked to decrease my Long Island accent, but I couldn't come out sometimes if I'm not paying attention, so I could say, like, sauce. But I don't usually say that. I usually say sauce. Um, and I went to school in Huntington, Long Island, and I, I, neither of my parents were really from Long Island, um, but we grew up there. My dad had a sailboat. Um, we used to do a lot of sailing. And, yeah, it was... It was fun. I, I go back now. My mom still lives there. Um, I go back now, and it's really beautiful. And I feel like I didn't really necessarily see, you know, think about how amazing it is when I was living there. But I don't know that I would ever want to live there again. <laughs> like, really live there. <laughs> but it's awesome. I mean, Long Island's a great place. Its proximity to the city is unparalleled. No, absolutely. Unfortunately, it's sinking and it's going back into the ocean. True. That's true. Oh, well, very slowly, but you know, it is sinking. But speaking of sinking, Chicago's sinking too. Because of the weather? Wait, why? Uh, well, Long Island's sinking because of the uh, rising ocean. Mm -hmm. um, Chicago's sinking because. Now, that's a good question. I just. I heard my dad and my brother talk about it yesterday. Uh, Chicago's sinking in another area of landmass is now appearing. So I guess that has something to do with it, but with the ocean tide. But Long Island, I know for a fact, it's because of the rise in ocean. It's going to raise and rise another 18 feet. So, you know, eventually, no more Long Island, no more New York City, unfortunately. So they need to get their, and their shit together and get a seawall <laughs> so they can save whatever's left. Yeah, I think um, Sandy kind of, Hurricane Sandy kind of helped us uh, with that, you know, helped us um, helped us kind of get in gear there because I think we realized how vulnerable this, the area was to rising tides and storms and such in a way that we weren't really before. But, yeah. No, absolutely. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, um, my brothers were um, born and raised on Long Island. My sister, I think, was Port Chester, Port Chester. And my other two brothers were, obviously, Port Chester. Let's see, doing it backwards. Port Jervis, Port Chester, um, Long Island. And I was the only one born in Monroe. 
well, upstate New York, whatever, Monroe, near Woodbury Commons. Is that where you live now? Yes. Yeah. It's it's like not Westchester. It's right above Westchester, right? Well, it's more near, um, you ever been to um, Woodbury Commons? Mm-hmm. It's near, like, West Point. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but everyone else, you know, it's in from, you know, Port Jester and whatever, Westchester. But my two brothers were from Massapequa. Oh, okay, yeah. Massapequa, that's, uh, like, south of where I'm from, southeast of where I'm from. Yeah, my, I'm sure, but Massapequa's down on the South Shore. No, absolutely. And my grandparents used to be in Seaford. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's also down. There's like a road that runs north and south and kind of connects Seaford to the area near Huntington. Seaford, it's about, yeah. Hey, you learn something new every day, right? <laughs> yeah, it's cool that your family's from Long Island. It's, you know, a lot of people live there. Yeah, I'm jealous. I always wanted to have an accent. Yeah, and I've worked away from my accent, so we're sort of going in this way with that. But yeah, no, I mean, as an actor especially, it's kind of important to kind of have like a standard American dialect, and then if you need to go into an accent, you can. Well, it, I've, I like the accents. Yeah, I think it's always good to have it. It makes you different. Yeah, for sure. But the next question I was going to ask you is growing up, did you do any sports in high school and college? And were you a study nerd or a party animal? Um, sports wise, I what I most of the sports I did were when I was younger. Like I was in swim team in junior high, but um, and I did some intramural basketball like outside of school. But I didn't really do much bas much sports partly because I tried crew for like a day and it didn't work because I could not run the amount you needed to run for that. Um, but I didn't do that many sports in high school, mostly because I was doing music and drama primarily. So it kind of like conflicted with the schedules. And then in, in high school, not like I took, you know, extra, I did exercise or like personal training gym stuff, but I didn't really do sports. In terms of like study nerd or party animal, it's kind of a combination of both because I really did hear about my studies and I really was on it with like writing papers and taking tests. But especially in college, but also in high school, I, yeah, I definitely went out a lot. When, especially once college hit, but in high school we would do a lot of going out too, like at, into town, into the village, or at the houses hanging out. So kind of like a nice balance of party and studies. <laughs> what about, let's see, uh, what type of sports were you interested in? Well, I did basketball um, for a time, like an intramural primarily, um, for a couple of years, and then swimming in junior high, and I also skied con like consistently throughout my youth, and even in my adulthood, I d did go this year. Um, so that was definitely a sport that mostly I did with my family. But um, yeah, I other than that, like not as many sports in high school probably. Um, but I was just thinking of one that I I was sort of did a little bit of soccer here and there, but not yeah, I wasn't like on a. I wasn't like on a JV or a, I wasn't like a JV or varsity jock or anything. You know, it's funny. So we mentioned backs of basketball. Now I sound like I'm an accent. <laughs> <laughs> a basketball. Um, I was going to make a joke. I just I had a brain fart. Anyway, you know, the, the disability. Like with basketball, you know, I lost count how many times I got whacked in the face because I have swell reflexes. People are always thought they were funny. Like, hey, Keith, think fast. And I used uh -oh. to get whacked in the face. People are nasty. People yeah. are mean. <laughs> like, what the? No, that's not okay. What about, uh, before I ask you what you major in, the last question I always ask the, um, the girls, because I can always, you know, I can refer with girls, apparently. Otherwise, that's kind of like, I don't know, weird. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but did he ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids or not into the whole human pyramid stuff? Wait, what? Can you repeat that? I didn't really hear you. Oh, did he ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids or not into the whole stuff? Um, well, I was on a cheer squad in junior high, uh, so I probably did one then. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I love that stuff. I'm a loser. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, no, I probably definitely did at least one in junior high. I don't think in high school, but did, did probably at least one in junior high. I think maybe the picture in one of the junior high yearbooks was us. I was always a base because I was, like, taller. But, uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> well, would you ever be up for it, or is now your forte? Now, um, I'm working on getting back in shape, so uh, maybe ask me in a month after I've exercised for. But, I, I mean, I was, you know, I was doing a lot of exercise. Um, I kind of, like, was slacking off a little bit the last couple months. But uh, when I was doing that, I definitely could could have done it. But I feel like now I need a little bit of more practice with the exercise. And then, yeah, why not? <laughs> well, you look great to me. Thank you. That's nice of you. Thank you. I have a, well, you can do uh, wraps around me. I have a fat neck. Yeah. That that, that's why it's a turtleneck. <laughs> Always a good choice. <laughs> what about, were you ever part of a fraternity? And what did you major in? I was not Greek. I uh, So I actually went to two different schools because I transferred um, after my sophomore year. But at my first college, a bunch of my friends were Greek. So I was friends with a lot of, you know, sorority girls and fraternity guys. Um, just going to plug my computer in. Sorry. Cause, it's fine. Uh, Anything can happen live. <laughs> it's like running out of battery. I had it plugged in before, but then it fell. Um, so, yeah. So I was friends with the Greek people, but I wasn't Greek. Um, and then... I, well, I majored in, you asked what I majored in, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, it was theater. It was acting, um, which I did at both schools. Partly one of the reasons why I transferred out was because I wanted to do that in the city, in New York City. Um, so, yeah, I was, I studied theater and acting. Yeah, oh, really cool. Yeah. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is I'm sure that you are an actress, model, and you've been on TV and film. First one I'm going to ask you is, who influenced you? Well, it, it sounds like an oxymoron because I'm going to cover it two parts. Who influenced you to become a model, and who influenced you to become an actress? Well, the acting thing, I'll start with the acting thing because that's what I do more of. Um... I, well, my parents were both professionals in their career, but they both had artistic leanings. Like, my mom had been a dancer when she was younger, and my dad did a lot of, like, visual art, like, sculpture um, and music. And so they kind of really valued the arts and, like, what that means um, in society and culture. And so partly that's one reason, because it was fostered a lot at home. Um, but actually, my grandmother, my dad's mom... Uh, produced and kind of founded a community theater company on Long Island, like a oh, community nice. yeah, called Huntington. For the most of the time, it was called Huntington um, Village Theater Company. It did turn into Huntington Repertory Theater Company at one point. So that helped me kind of also do, because I did some theater with her, and I did, a, like, a few plays. And then even when I was younger, like, before I was a teen, I was doing a couple, like, little performances with that. So I think that's one thing that helped. And then... And then I kind of was involved in it in school, and my sister had danced as well when she was younger. She's older than me. I went to like a performing arts camp, and I studied outside of high school um, acting. Um, so that's probably like mostly how I got into it. And then I kind of was, I remember sort of being at the end of high school, deciding what I wanted to pursue in college. And I was like, well, I guess I'll do theater. <laughs> uh, that's what I like. <laughs> and I did, and now I'm here. Um, modeling, I think modeling was mostly just kind of, um, ha happened because, uh, I'm an actor and with acting, there's a lot of like opportunities for models, um, uh, taller helps too with modeling. Um, I'm trying to think like if anyone specifically influenced me, like I, I had just done, I've done some modeling gigs and it's mostly just, I do remember meeting someone who I did like, uh, web series sort of with who then I was a model for her and I did it was mostly in conjunction with acting as modeling and the height and the height helped now let me ask you do you think the height helped or hurt well for modeling it helped uh the only thing that's tough about modeling is, is I'm sort of body wise like in between there's sort of like the fashion like the runway which is very thin and then like plus size tends to be very busty and curvy and I'm kind of like in the middle of that. So modeling while the height helped was, it, it was a little harder for me. Um, and height in terms of 
film, it's a little harder to be like a taller woman because a lot of the actors and actresses are short. Um, even if you don't realize that, like, like you know, a lot of them are. But you know, it is what it is, and I, you know, there's a lot of tall actors and actresses too. So, you know, kind of makes you special. You know, the more I look at you, I kind of see uh, a little resemblance to Molly Kunis a little bit. You could be your stunt yeah. double. I, you know, what's funny. I think that, like, I've never really gotten that before. But like, no one else, maybe like once, has like told me that. But I think that. <laughs> so um, there you go. We agree on something. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the next question I was going to ask you was, what were some of your favorite moments when you did film and television? Like, did you do commercials? Did you have, like, an extra part on TV? So, well, one of my favorite film moments was when I did a film, which I don't, I think I did tell you about this, um, and I'm sure you'd be interested in it if you, I didn't. Um, it was with um, to the people who created it both had Down syndrome, and so they were sort of like, we don't care that we have Down syndrome, we want to make a movie. And um, it was, they did. And they uh, created it and they produced it with one of their brothers helped and then they got the director on board who had, was well connected and had done crew and directing in New York. And so then I came on board just kind of through a casting, like an audition. And it had, got, it had generated like a lot of money on Kickstarter. Um, and it got a like morning show segments because it was this kind of feel good story. These two kids who have Down syndrome say that nothing's going to hold them back and they're going to make a movie. And so then it premiered and it went to a bunch of film festivals in around. And it was called, originally it was called Sam and Maddie Make a Zombie Movie, but then the official title was Spring Break Zombie Massacre. And I played a dual role. And they're actually doing, they were working on a documentary alongside the whole process from like the conception, the writing to like, after film festivals and so that's they just are they're going to release that short, soon um the documentary so that was one of my favorite moments because because it was a professional job and it, but it was also had this really nice element of um like a social justice sort of like a message these people whose voices aren't usually heard are heard and they don't care that they, you know, we put them in a box. They want to make a movie. They're going to make a movie. Um, so that was really lovely. That was definitely one of my favorite moments thus far. The makeup team was down from an, up from Atlanta, which did a great job. Like a lot of special effects. Um, got to play a mother-daughter role, which was fun. So it was playing like two different characters on film. TV-wise, um, I've done some commercials, smaller commercials, nothing like huge, not like a national commercial or anything, but I've done some smaller commercials, and I did one for a pet brush, which was fun, because I got to work with a dog, which was <laughs> super fun, it was in my face the whole time, but it was awesome. Um, and then TV-wise, I did I did like a spot on a show called Who the Bleep Did I Marry, which was uh, kind of like a antagonist like a villain like a woman who was committing a crime and so that was nice because it was sort of the opposite usually it's like the male committing a crime right yeah now my other question is actually i will save that we're gonna take a quick commercial break okay. i'm gonna ask you two more questions then i'm gonna pass the show over to you okay sure Williams. This is Vanessa Lina. I'm Asian Lalo. Hi, Michael. This is Cynthia Bastinay. I'm Sonia Fisher. This is Shane Smith. My name is Alexandra Bowie. My name is Amelia Clover. Hi, I'm Amy Linden. Hi, I'm Anita Nicole Brown. It's Meg Green. Hi, my name is Asata Caldwell. Hi, everybody. I'm Brooke Percy. Hi, I'm Bryn Berg. Hi, I'm Casey Dunn. Hi, everybody. It's Cassandra Kavinsky. Hi, I'm Christina Breza. I'm Cindy Hogan. I'm Courtney Sinello. Hi, I'm Daisy. My name is Deborah Jane East. Hi, my name is Dinah Marasea. Hi, everyone. I'm Victoria London. Hi, I'm Heather Krona. Hi, I'm Heather Callahan Stevens. Hi, I'm Jay Nicole Ralph. My name is Jamie Patrol. My name is Tui. My name is Julia Brankovich. This is Kathleen Wills. Kimberly Amato. Hi, my name is Laura Putnam. My Hi, I'm Laura Shapanis. Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Damas. This is Michelle Mupo, a.k.a. Fuchsia. I'm, the, I'm Rachel Oliveira. Hi, my name is Sarah Joy Mount. Hi, I'm Susan Brender. Um, hi everyone, this is Venus Leone. Hi, I'm Cheryl Turner. Hi, I'm Stephanie Herrera, and I was just on the Keith Andrew Network. It was tons of fun. We used up all our time and then some. I really recommend this show, and uh, try to be on a guest on Keith's show. It was super fun. Wait. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Key Fangin Hour. This is episode 576. I'm here with the beautiful and talented Justine S. Harrison. I just want to say thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for sticking with us, guys. I'm glad you're here. Now, the first thing I do want to plug is June 15th. I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I would love to have you there. June 15th is a Saturday from 2 to 5. I plan on having my 6th annual anniversary talk show celebration. It's going to be at Warwick, New York from 2 to 3. It's story time with Keith. I will tell you how I came up with the whole show from a birthday list. All away from all the bullshit that I had to overcome. All those two-faced people I you, I came across, and you probably come across a lot of them from being in the business. <laughs> and from three to four, it's going to be the roasting. I will take questions from the audience. Also, I really want you there now because I want you to roast me. I think oh, that would be really fun. And the oh, go ahead. The only way I wouldn't be there is if I'm in L.A. Because there's a slight chance I'm going to be in L.A. in June. But maybe I can, like, Skype in with you. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. Yeah. <laughs> but June 15th, that's a Saturday. And if, I'm four, and if I'm four to five, that will also be an autograph signing. But with that being said, the last two questions I'm going to ask you is, have you ever worked with people with disabilities? Apparently, you work with me, obviously. Uh, are you willing to work with people with disabilities, and have you worked with people with disabilities? Yeah, so um, I mentioned before that two filmmakers I worked with had Down Syndrome, and they created the film. Um, it was called, originally, it was called Sam and Maddie Make a Zombie Movie, and um, now it's called Spring Break Zombie Massacre, and they had Down Syndrome. They created the film from, uh, they did a lot of drawing at first of, of like the storyboard, and then they brought their brother and a uh, directing partner on board, um, Barbie, um, on board, and they made the film and they helped direct it and they starred in it. Uh, the official director's name is Robert Carnavale, but they were sort of they, they Sam and Maddie, who were the two that had Down syndrome, definitely had their input in, and so it was nice because we got to hear from these voices that we, you know, that you're not usually hearing from, and it really wasn't about having Down syndrome; it was more just kind of what was like that was what was happening there was no real like down syndrome in the movie it wasn't like a thought piece on what it's like to have um down syndrome it was more like a fun ride um and they were just that we raised seventy thousand they well they raised we all raised seventy thousand dollars on kickstarter they had done it i came in after that had happened because i came in through a casting and it was really unique working with these like differently abled if you will performers um, and getting to know people with Down syndrome on a more intimate level, I mean, made me, you know, I, it's just really nice to have people that are friends with you who are different kinds of people than you may be normally. Um, and they, it was wonderful. I mean, it was a great experience and it really brought like a new uh, consciousness to the film, something that wouldn't be there if it was just two people who were normal, quote unquote, making a movie. And they had raised... Uh, you know, people responded really well. They went on morning show segments. They went on Conan O'Brien. So they were very well received because of what they were doing. Um, and other than that, I don't know if I've worked with... I did work with a gentleman in a wheelchair who had suffered an accident when he was younger. Uh, I was sort of in, like, a comedy shoot with him. Um, that was That was, you know, he had a really nice outlook on the world and, like, life you know, who sort of wasn't always disabled uh, to become that way because of an accident. So it was kind of this very nice view on what, um, you know, on, on life. Um, so, yeah, so both of those experiences were were great. And I would certainly work with people with disabilities, again, due to the, well, or differently able, if you will, because um, why not? <laughs> they bring a new perspective, a freshman perspective to the world. No, absolutely. And my last question, then I'm going to pass it over to you, is social media. Can social media make you or break you? And with everything you accomplish in your career, from acting, modeling, and being on TV, doing commercials, does LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or anything I didn't even mention, does that influence the people to work with you and to get the roles? 
And does it bother you when people unfriend you? Not really unfriend me. Well, unfriend you and unfollow you. Okay. Um. Uh. So yes, I I think that uh, social media is important. Um. I think that I've definitely gotten some job offers via social media. This is one. What we were you had contacted me on Facebook Messenger, um, or I friended me, and um, I've definitely gotten other people who sent me on auditions. You know, via Facebook especially, and I gotten some gigs on like via Instagram as well I mean I think it's important to keep up a presence you don't necessarily have to but it's a kind of um he went to a panel recently on like social media and acting and it's sort of a way to promote yourself um you know for free um so that helps and I and sometimes I'm like if I wasn't an actor I'd delete Facebook um I have not deleted Facebook yet but I do sort of believe that if I wasn't an actor I may because sometimes it can get very frustrating but um and in terms of people unfollowing me doesn't really, like, on Instagram and Twitter, I don't really care much when they unfollow me. On on Facebook, depending on who it is, yes. If I'm unfriended, not all the time, because if it's someone who I, like, really don't know that well, or I don't really, that's not a big deal. But sometimes it can, like, it can be a real, like, it can feel really hurtful if someone unfriends you or blocks you is even worse. It's like a... <laughs> it's like a punch or like a yeah it's definitely like an arrow through the heart sometimes I've definitely had my uh, feelings of like why <laughs> what did I do <laughs> because you know, I go I befriend people like I said in my last interview you know it doesn't matter if you're 6 or 60 I will approach you if you're on social media and say hey this is what I'm doing I have a talk show for people with disabilities and I would like to have you as a fan. Oh. And what annoys me is when people say, oh, you're doing this terrific thing. I'm a big fan of yours. I love you. This is so great. Keep up the good work. And then we're going to follow you. Wink, wink. Follow you. And then like a couple of weeks later, a month later, you go back and say, huh, why is my numbers dropping? And then you found out the asshole are now friends you. Or they unfollow you and then they're like, oh, well, tell them, don't take it personally, but I lost interest in you. Or, huh. you know, I uh, I found something better to do in my time. And huh. I didn't want to become a fan of yours. Then why did you say you think I'm doing a great fan? You know, I, I just say hypocrites. Yeah. Well, the other thing that's funny is when you, when someone follows you, this doesn't happen on Facebook just because of the way it works, but yeah. when someone follows you and then, like, waits for you to follow them and then unfollows you, like, a couple weeks later, that's always a blast. The thing on Instagram, though, is I think, because I notice numbers going down, like, pretty re regularly, and it's not that many. It's, like, a few, because I don't have, you know, I have, like, a, over, a little over a 1,000 followers, so I'm not, like, in the million range or anything, but I'll go down a couple, and I think that's just because Instagram does a better job of, like, clearing out the bots. Yeah. They do a really good job of that, I think, more so than Twitter and Facebook, I think. So that actually, like, in some ways it gives me solace because I'm like, okay, at least. But it's funny because I've gotten over 1,000, but getting to, like, 1,500 or like, even 1,100 is, is, seems more challenging than getting my first 1,000 even or second 500 at least. It's, it's an interesting art keeping people engaged on Instagram. No, oh, absolutely. You know, my Twitter, while we're talking about it, my Twitter's over uh, 1,000. I think as of today, it's over 1,000 and 2,100, 21 people. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook fan page is over oh, like 1,000 and something. I'm having a hard time getting my Instagram up there, but it's slowly moving. I'm kind of like a bowel movement. People would say that about my talk show. Yeah. But uh, it's 800 something, and you know, it keeps fluxing. And, um, you know, like you said, what's all the spam bots and everyone? This is what this kid said to me, you know, I unfriended you because I thought you were a robot. I was like, <laughs> why? It's like, that's oh, an you, oh, go ahead. That's just like, that's like a new excuse as to like unfriend or unfollow. Like, oh, I thought you were a bot. <laughs> And it's like, oh, why? Because, you, oh, you, you reply too fast. 
Why? Because you asked me a question and I asked you something and it's like, oh, he's a bot. It's so weird. It's definitely a weird thing. Um, yeah, it's, it takes time. Like, it takes, you have to put, I don't know, you have to put, you definitely have to put time into it to, like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> it is. Now, the next question I was going to ask you. I just uh, it's like I forgot what this card was for a minute. <laughs> I was gonna ask you it was the last three minutes and I pass it over to you. You can ask me anything you want. Gloves off. This is your time. Was there anything you wanted to know? Anything you wanna talk about? Promote, this is your time. Did you go to college? I was unable to actually because I was I'm not qualified because I read and learn at a fifth grade level. And I'm on the spectrum of being retarded. Okay. And I have a IEP diploma. The only thing I could have went to is like Orange Community College or the SUNY. Not, not, not uh, yeah, SUNY um, Orange Middletown. And like, oh, you can learn how to work on cars. I yeah. suck. I don't like cars. Okay, cars are nice, but I'm not a car guy. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, you can work on a refrigerator, boring. Oh, you can work in an old age home, janitor, yeah, worst case scenario. But I want to do this. I actually called my school recently and said I was interested in being a substitute teacher. Ten years ago, I might have had a chance, but now they're like, oh, what college you want to? Okay, yeah. maybe another idea. Yeah. I, I want to turn this into like an after school program. Say, like, hey, uh, I'm actually a local celebrity going to be. Would you be interested in having me come to the school and do like an after school program? Because they have the audio visual department. Yeah. And they actually, I came up with the morning show. And mm -hmm. I said, why not make a class out of it for after school? You can give the kids credit. And they can use the credit towards, you know, colleges or whatever. Plus, to keep them out of trouble. And I never heard back on it because, you know, I'm not qualified. But it's kind of like, the reason I'm doing this is to show you, look at someone who reads and learns at a fifth grade level who's not qualified to do anything. Look at what he's able to accomplish. Yeah, and I think that's really good, like, sort of the movie I worked on, like, I think it's good to remind people that doors are open for them, and you don't have to feel like you are, like, you don't have to feel like you're closed off from what you want to really accomplish. Um, I remember, I saw, I think it was on your Skype, you, like, described yourself as professional talk show host, and I liked that, because I was like, who's gonna believe it if you don't write that, you know? Like, I think that it's, yeah. That's important. And I think there's a lot of people out there like you. And I don't know that their voices are fostered enough. And I think that there needs to be more in, like engagement um, to that community for sure. Oh, absolutely. Now, There's I do some... have a couple questions for you off the air. The sure. first one I'm going to ask you what we're all wrapping up is how can people follow you? Are you on LinkedIn? I know it sounds like an oxymoron because I know and you know, but they don't know. They tell you you're kind of learning something new. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. are you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Stage32? Is there any websites you would recommend saying you have to be on there? Well, sure. Yeah. So, I am um, Instagram is Justine S. Harrison, and that's also my Facebook acting page. Um, and my. Twitter is Justine S. Harriso with no N because the letters are in out and I wanted to put the S because there's another Justine Harrison out there who's like a scientist and so I needed to put the S but then there was no room for the N. So it's Justine S. Harriso. Um, and then uh, my website's JustineSHarrison.com. YouTube also is Justine S. Harrison. Um, you can type it in and subscribe or like some of my videos. Um, and what was you were saying? Oh, I actually this is really funny. I actually just um, just started using Reddit, <laughs> which is um, incredibly geeky, but it's also very fun. And I mostly use it to uh, discuss like TV shows I like um, at this point. 
But so that's hilarious. Um, and that's fun. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think that's probably where it's at. I definitely am active across the three. I am on LinkedIn, but um, it's not as necessary for this profession. Um, but I'm, I'm active across those three main social medias, for sure, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Justine yeah. S. Harrison. No, absolutely. You know, I'm on, you know, like you said, no, no website, Reddit. Um, I don't know how to use it, <laughs> but, you know, I try to use it. I'm on Pinterest, Tumblr. Oh. Don't use it. I'm there. Um, I am on Pinterest. I am on Pinterest. I don't use Pinterest that much, but I am on Pinterest. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. No, did I interrupt you? No, that's all I was saying. It's <laughs> like, I don't use Pinterest much, but I am on it. <laughs> I, like I said, I'm there. A lot of people say like I'm there like a bad rass. <laughs> yeah. But last question I was going to ask you don't get to talk off the air. Is when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your first reaction? And after being a guest, how do you feel now? And would you recommend it for other people? So when you first asked me, I was pleased. I was excited. Uh, I thought it was a cool opportunity. And then you told me a little bit more about, you know, where you're coming from. And I was thought it was neat. I'm always interested in talking. I love chatting anyway and discussing my career is always something that's fun for me um and talking with you and learning about you I'm very interested in other people um and after I fun I mean it was casual it was laid back it was like a coffee chat it wasn't there wasn't any real formality it was it was it, yeah, it was easy going I liked it I had a good time with Keith Andrew no absolutely and a lot of people think and I said this in my last interview you know I'm not going to use you and try to become famous off of your image or try to use the interview, I'll put money, stuff and money in my pocket. You're doing this because it's a good message, it's a good cause, and you're making a good friend out of it. Yeah, so, exactly. And I tend to like, and I like like fostering good, those two things, absolutely engaging in this arena, for sure. And for the record, I absolutely do not pay people to do interviews because if I, if I have to pay you, I'm bribing you to be do the interview, and you're completely missing the whole insumption of the show. What's it about? Yes, I was not paid to be here. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a couple questions off the air about wrapping up. It was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two. I know. I'm excited. I appreciate being here, and I'm glad I'm excited to see it. <laughs>